and people are like, well, platforms don't really, you know, don't really matter that much. That's inside baseball. That's for the gurus, right? But they did a study out of Stephen F. Austin University, and they found uh, the Republican Party votes with its platform about 89% uh, of the time. The Democrat Party votes with its platform about 74% of the time. So if we not want to know the direction our leaders are going to take, depending on who's elected this year, it's so important for us Carolina, to know. Because that's what we believe. And you stood. And, and I thank God for that. In the midst of that whole occasion, God had taken me to the book of Nehemiah. And he had taken me to the second chapter, verse 17 and 18. Because I believe the vision God gave Nehemiah is the vision that Nehemiah delivered to the people that caused them to be able to rebuild a wall that had been down for 142 years and they were able to rebuild it in 52 days. What was the vision that God gave Nehemiah? It was very simple. He said, you see the distress that we are in, how the gates are burned with fire and the walls are broken down. He said, come and let us rebuild the walls of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach or an embarrassment. He said, Then I told them of the hand of my God which was good upon me, and of the king's words that he had spoken to me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. And they set their hands to this good work. You see, our message that we've all right here in Bladen County have got to be sharing in our Sunday school classes, in our churches, in our community groups, in our neighborhoods, with our families. Here's the message. It was the vision God gave Nehemiah to rebuild the walls, and it's the vision we're going to have to have in this election to begin the rebuilding of America. And number one, recognize the emergency that we are in. Ladies and gentlemen, when we come to a time in this state and in this nation that we actually are having conversations about whether or not men should use men's rooms and women should use women's rooms, we better wake up and recognize we're in an emergency. We have hit the bottom. We have reached a point that we would have never imagined we would have faced in this culture so quickly in this day. We Listen, I don't even have the time, and you don't need me to take the time, to list for you all of the things that you would say would point to the fact that we are in an emergency today. And we truly are. And that's the first thing Nehemiah said. He said, just look around you and see the distress that we are in. The second thing that he did is he said, we're going to rely upon God. You say, well, how do you know that? Because he said, I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. Let me tell you something. Nehemiah was cupbearer to the king. I mean, that was a cushy job. He, he had been in the king's palace. He had eaten at the king's table. If you'd gone to shake Nehemiah's hand, I seriously doubt you'd ever felt a callus had been the softest hands you've ever shaken. Why? Because I don't know that he had done a physical day's labor in his whole life. He was cupbearer to the king. He did not have a clue how to pull a plumb line. He didn't have a clue how to mix mortar. He didn't have a clue how to lay a brick. And yet this was the very man that God would use to rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. And I would, I would submit to you today that you could have had the greatest architects of the Great Wall of China, the architects of the greatest skyscrapers in America, and none of them could have done the job that Nehemiah did for one reason. The hand of God was all over Nehemiah's life. You see, I love what we saw when we came in. Pray for the election and then pray some more.